JSON or list inside list inside list. Now, this is how you could uh, un like uh, unlist it or un um, make it like uh, just a tip table like structure, and to just to, to make you make it easier for you to deal with the in your data analysis uh, process. So let's say in the introduction, you say that um, you will learn about the tidy R uh, two, two function, unnest longer and unnest uh, wider. Uh, there's two functions that we will use. And uh, I think he mentioned also the, the package that we will use to get the JSON data, which is called uh, recursive. This one and the parser, and uh, it's called it's some more about like um, uh, let's let's go into the it's, it's uh, let's see so it's a documentation talk about it's provider recursive lists that are handy when teaching and examples so it's just providing a data set we will use the data set uh, in this package to just demonstrate how we could deal with JSON data or nested data. Um, yeah, and JSON Lite, it's a package that to deal with JSON transformation from, if you wanted to transform JSON files into R lists, we'll use JSON Lite, that's, that's what we did to talk about here. Uh, and the normal tidyverse package that we are using. Um, so yeah, first to to begin, we have to talk about the data structure, which is called lists. And lists is different from other data structures that uh, or simple or vectors that we deal with deal with before, which is not like uh, the same homogeneous data types. It's uh, it's it's a part of like a structure where you could add multiple different data types at the same structure. Um, this is how this is how it's. It's, it's, it's displayed here. We have numbers, sequence of numbers, and we have string, and we have Boolean. So we have three different data types in the same variable, but it's uh, it's in a list. Um, it's the same, I think, the, like with with Python. Also, we found this similar. Um, yeah. Now, here he talked about. It's often convenient to name this component or children in the list. Uh, which can do the same with the way with as naming column in, uh, in tables in tuples, and now, yeah, you see here it's just naming uh, sequences in the list. We'll talk more about named list and unnamed list because this is really core 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 um, information that we'll deal with. Uh, to, to use uh, the unlist wider and then unlist longer functions. Um, other than that, he said here that you could use the structure just to, to know the names, the, to, to know the data types, all the data types at, at once. Uh, so here you use a structure uh, function. Here also you use a structure function. And now, um, you see here there's um you see the all, all the all the variables and this is all the variables of difference this is the same but we are the we are the ones that will define each one of them now yeah let's move to the hierarchy so we could have a list inside list like a tree a tree like structure where you have list inside list inside list and so on and so forth. So you see, you could like have this like uh, really in depth tree uh, that represent a, a complex data type using lists. Uh, so it's so powerful that, um, and also you could like we you will you will definitely use them when you deal with uh, nested data structures like JSON. Now, this is notably different to C. It's like not like C because C is a generate a flat vector. But this one is like nesting. It's like nesting on one on top of the other. Um, and as lists get more complex, the structure get more useful. But uh, and we see the hierarchy. But again, when you use the structure, it's eventually start to fail 
like you said here, uh, because it's um, behind the scene. It says that we've talked about this in chapter um, 27 iteration, but mainly because you are it's a recursive uh, recursive list type of structure where you process a lot different type of structure at once. This this uh, take some kind of computation power uh, from the, your machine. That's why it's uh, too, it could be like too, uh, too slow uh, to compute. And now he said, he said to overcome this, you could use a view, uh, view function to see the overall uh, structure. And you could, of course, if you, if you type just view, you'll see that's just one level. Now, if you could, if you, if you want to go uh, more in depth level, you will use, um, you will basically, uh, I think this, it's, uh, yeah, we use the, um, I think it's, it's talking about, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's in, the, in the view itself, you could like just press this buttons and then you see the, the overall structure. But still, it's not a convenient way to see the complex, this kind of complex structures. That's why he will talk about less columns. Now, this can also live inside a tuple, and we we know the tuple that we just columns beside each other, and this column this this those columns are useful because they allow you to place objects in a tuple. This wouldn't be useful belong um, it in particular list column are used a lot in the tidy model ecosystem. I don't really understand how it's used in tidy model because i don't try i didn't know uh, if i don't know if in, uh, how how tidy model are dealing with this kind of lists um, but um i think this will be useful if one that have experience in tidy model will it will think on this one um but yeah so what is what else yeah here is you just define a tuple with type with with two uh, three variables each variables uh, has a name and um, this one is a, is a number and this one is a combination of two um, combined with, with two strings and this one is a list inside the list inside the list let's go back okay uh, yeah this is a list uh, uh, there is a list and inside it is the two lists two different lists and if you see it in as a data frame, let's let's try to get this one. Let's see. Let's see it in action. So what is the call? It's called the um, data set that you're using. Yeah, yeah, it's not that using any data set, it's just an example. So let's see it. So now let's see it in the other one. So this is a, this is a structure. We have an X and Y and Z. Z have two sets, two lists, um, and it itself is a list here. As you see here, let's, let's try to make it bigger. I, yeah. So I hope this is uh, being well. Um, but yeah, as I said, have is a list which consists of two lists. Um, now let's go back and see this one. Okay, so there's nothing special about lists in the tuple. They behave, behave like uh, other columns, normal. And now you could hear mentioning that you could like, um, instead of using structure, you could use view or view or structure uh, interchangeably. Um, and here is mentioning that the base R could use lists uh, in a data frame, data dot frame uh, structure. But this is unrelevant to us. So now, we, let's talk about the unnesting part, how we could unnest lists 
um, a complex data structure that that we could face when we're dealing it with um, some kind of API that we call, we try to call. Most of API like returning JSON to us, so it's important to know how to unless this kind of structure to a tabular structure that we can do with. Um, now, um, okay, let's go into this one. So there's two types of lists, as I've mentioned before. There is a named list and uh, unnamed list. The named list looks like this. You just provide, um, okay, I, I just clicking. Okay, so let you just provide the name and the number, the name and the number, or the value, even it doesn't have it to be a number, any value. So it's the name and the value, uh, and it have to be the same name because it's it's like a it's like a column. We just basically define a column, but inside uh, a list. So, and we could we will see how it's look like in um, in 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 the R Studio. Let's see. So this will be look like this. Now let's go back and see the differences. So this is the named one. We provide we have two two type two names A and B, which is when we uh, unlisted which will be an A column and B column. That's how easy it is when, when you have names uh, in, in your list. But most of the time you, have, you will have unnamed structure, which is there is no lens, specific lens for it. For example, here he says that in DF2, which is this one, the element of list column Y are unnamed and vary in lens from one to three. So this one is the three elements, this one is a to uh, one element and this one is three elements. Um, and this is the differentiation when we use unnest wider or unnest longer. So unnest wider, basically it just take any uh, any type of, un of, of a named list and prov like uh, convert it into um, a table with a column of the name we provide into the list. And it has to be the same name, the same number of elements, this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, in the other side, when, the, when you talk about the unnamed list, it will be, uh, diff since it's not having a name and it's different, uh, each element is different, we will use uh, unnest longer. And unnest longer will treat every so on this long, longer, which will will vary from row to row, uh, the the, only, uh, the unnamed list will vary from row to row, and on this uh, longer will basically uh, put each element of them in a single a single row. So this is how it's doing it. Um, let's see let's see it in action because this is too theory, too theoretical, and let's see. I said this one. Let's enter this one. Okay. Now, if it is working, yes. Okay. If you see if the DF1 is having the same number of elements, then the DF2 have different number of lists, uh, list elements. Um, so yeah, let's let's see what the example say here. You see it now. We try to use uh, the honest wider on the na the named list that I, that we were talking about. Let's see what the look like. So if you use the honest wider on the Y, on the Y, which is this, this one. And it's named A and B. You'll see that A can a, a norm, uh, separate column and B is a separate column, uh, and the values in, uh, like on top of each other, quarters. Now, 
let's try to see the, the other one, which is uh, the wider. Yeah, it's talking okay about, of course. So this one is important because you, you more than probable that we, you will face that it's um, the name of the, the list that you are providing or being providing to been providing provided to you is um, it already exists in the overall structure of the table. So it could be you will talk about the ID. Now it's the ID could be exists in different type of tip, the tables. And that's why we need a differentiation between some of those. Um, and here we could use the name separation. Name separation is basically just say okay, you have an Y variable, I will put underscore in each one of the named one, and I will combine it together and say, and say here, uh, Y underscore A and Y underscore B. This, is what, this will be helpful when we name, uh, we'll have same names in the overall table, because it will, will say, okay, I have already this column, how I could convert it or add, it, add another column with the same name. Um, so yeah, this is this is the name separation, um, name separation uh, attribute in the unnest wider. Um, so the unnest longer is doing this the, what we talked about. Instead, we will deal with unnamed lists. So EF2 is unnamed list. Um, so if we try to see it here, let's see. This one, one. Okay. So this unnamed list, like what we said, it will be, let's see it here. Okay, so this is the unnamed list, the DF2. If each element are like inserted in, a, in its own row, so it's uh, 11 here is, is in all row, 12, 13, and so on and so forth. Now, the X variable is, repeated because it's uh, it's the same variable of x but different variable different value of y that's why you have to be like uh, mindful when you do this because you will introduce some kind of duplication when you do this um but yeah this is how we use on this longer just crammed all together in in the, in the same row in the same column but uh, each one of in each element in in, in separate row. Um, let's see. Let's go back. So any any kind of question here till now? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think it's fine for me. It's it's fine. Okay. Um. Yeah. So can you go 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 back a little bit? Oh, um. Where are we? So like on name on name list. Yeah. 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 So okay. So if it is here, um, what will be the column's name, right? Because it's on name list, right? It's on name, so it's, it doesn't have a name. So what would be like if you unnest it? What would be the column name? It's, it would be a Y. So okay, overall, you are. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's why you see here uh, the Y variable here. Okay. This is, this is just the name of the column itself that we inserted in the tuple. Yeah. When we provide uh, provided with uh, the list so okay. it's like normal table but it's the same yeah way. yeah but what are, can you go all back a little bit yeah what about okay. this one here we still have the y's and we have the a and b yes because if we have a named one we replace mm -hmm. the y with the a um, uh -huh. in each one and you have to be consistent that's why it said that the named one you have to be consistent because you are having specific lengths and a specific, uh, specific name, uh, so it, have, it has to be the same, the same number of element and the same name on each of the element, or each of row, each row have to have to be in the same name. Uh, so the, st the structure, I think of it as a as a column, but named. Uh, this is how I think about it: just named column uh, in a list. Hmm. But we want to uh, like um, extract it from the list. That's how I think about it. Okay. So yeah, let's go into 
you talk about the unless longer. So this is unless longer. Yeah. Yeah, he talk here about the duplicated x. Yeah, note how x is duplicated for each element inside of i. We get one row of outer for each element inside the last column. But what happens if we uh, if one of the element is empty? So if one of the element is empty, which is the list, empty list, it will not appear. Like here, you, see, you will see, you see it is not appearing. The C, there is no C uh, in the in the tipple. So instead, to to make it appear, you have to be to to give give it keep empty true in the in the in the unless longer, and it will give it will add the C variable with an uh, with an NA. Um, so yeah. This is how you could if if you if you dealt with uh, 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 an empty list, how you could deal with it. You want to see it or not? This is how you could do it. Um, yeah. So what happens if you unless the list of columns that contain different types? So this is we talk here about different types of lists. The named and unnamed. We, when we talked about them, it's all the same uh, type. Which is numbers. Here, all we deal with numbers, same same types. But here, we, what we what will happen if we deal with different types? So it says that, for example, take the following that set where the list column Y contains two uh, two numbers and a character and a logical, uh, which can't normally be mixed in a single column. Honest will uh, always keeps the set of column unchanged. While changing the number of rows, so basically, if it, because it's unnamed, it, it doesn't matter how, what is the type of, of them, it will make each one of these element in separate row, which is which different data types. Um, so that's uh, of, of course this is when you use uh, unnamed longer. Unnamed longer is just the, what I said before. Every element in the list will be it's, it's in its in its own. Um, row. So when we do unlist longer in Y in this on this data data frame, it will just convert the one to the double here in the in the separate column in the separate row. A in the in itself is a character and true is in itself in the new row. Again, same, just new rows for every element in the lists combined. So it's just it doesn't matter if I, where is it. But uh, to to know which like the mapping between the x and y, we we that's why we do duplication to know uh, this is to belong to what to b variable, um, but all of them belong to uh, all all of those are the, are uh, the, uh, like belongs to the b variable in the x uh, column. Um, so yeah, let's see. There's other function on this O2 automatically mix between. Oh yeah, so you can provide it with other like uh, user on this O2, user on this O2 uh, to just choose and change automatically between the longer and wider. Um, and it's it's great for rapid exploration, but ultimately is a bad idea because it doesn't force you to understand how your data is structured. It's like basically it doesn't like don't um, it's it's not unreadable when you deal with it uh, when you do it in your code and after or after a while you could forget about it and you have to to research about it again that's why uh, be verbose on this side try to use uh, the longer and wider when it when when it's proper um, here we have also a function which is called unnest expand both rows and column. It's useful when you have a list of columns that contains 2D structure, uh, like a data frame, which is which you don't see in this book, um, but you, you might encounter in uh, if you use a tidy model ecosystem. But the main one, again, uh, the on this longer and on this wider is the main ones. Um, so this is kind uh, yeah. Now, he, he provided here when in the book three case study, three Three different case studies to to, to more to understand more how we could deal with this kind of structure, complex structure, uh, when we do analysis. Um, so, let's say 
to show that action, this section works through three real rectangling challenges using data set from a uh, reported package. Uh, now we will use the package itself. Um, so very wide data. So um, he provided, he said that we will, will use GH, which is GitHub uh, repos data set. And it's, um, it's more an API level data set that really get, we collected from the GitHub API. And it's deeply nested, very deeply nested uh, list. So it's difficult to show the structure in this book. So if you try to uh, uh, like see the structure in view, you will not even be able to see it um, because it's have too many level, too too much level that you even to track, you will you'll not be able to track uh, either. Um, so here, uh, GH repo is a list, but our tools work with list column. So we will begin putting it into a tuple. Um, so uh, GH repos itself is a, is a list as a list. We call this column JSON for reasons we will get to later. Now, this is the name of the column, and we provided a list. This is a list, plus a list. So when we convert it into table, it, it appears like this. This is an, the column name, and it, it's, an, its type is lists, and it contains a lot um, multiple lists with the same number of um the same number of um uh, elements so you see here it's the same number of elements now uh the table contains six rows uh one of rows each okay uh contain unnamed list so this is unnamed list with the same number uh no yeah this one is different so it's not not all the same number so uh the unnamed list with either 26 or 30 rows uh since these are unnamed we will start to unnest longer. So unnamed list, again, we map unnamed, unnamed list into the unnest longer function and named list into the wider, into the unnest wider function. Um, so here, when you use the unnest longer, you will see, um, let's, let's try it out. Let's see it in the action. Um, let's see. I don't know if it's provided or we want have to uh, download it. Yes. Okay. So this is the last. Now let's see what um, if we use the the last uh, the on um, the on longer function, it will be like this. So you see here, it's a, it's a, it's a list. Something in, some interesting, something interesting in the book. You see here, this is so called it's called name list. I don't know if it's this because uh, this this is new new to R something new and have and have a different version. But here it appears that it's just called it's called list again, even if so it's on name. What? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see whether it is named. So if you um, whether it is named after we unless can you move fast? Yeah, can you scroll down so that we can see whether it is named? Yeah, it is named. Yeah, it's named. Uh, but it's, so uh, let's I don't see. know why why it's called here name. But in the when I use R, it said this also. So it is, it's the same as. Uh, as an unnamed, same, but of course, unnamed have different, like, uh, dense. But yeah, I don't, yeah, maybe something that, um, uh, a feature or something. I would search about it, but mainly it's on, it's a named list. So we can use this, uh, the unnamed longer and after it, because it's named. Let's see. So we did this on this longer now because it's it's unnamed. Now it's become named, and to to deal with name with the named uh, list, we use on this lower wider. So let's we'll see all a lot of columns actually. Uh, this one. 
So yeah, we have ID name, full name. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> so yeah, this this is how um, you you basically extracting and transforming your your nested data into um, a tabular like structure, which is here at tipple also. Um, so yeah, this is a tipple after we unnested them using the unnest longer and unnest wider. Now let's go into, uh, because we don't know the names here, it said that we, because it's, it's a lot of columns, uh, you could use the names uh, function to know what, what is the names of the columns and get it the first 10, 10 head. But yeah, the, the, but basically you just, this is how we could do unstructure uh, or unnesting to um, a JSON file or uh, a nested structure, a nested list, list structure. And you see here that if you select the ID and full name and owner description, the owner itself is a name list or um, a list itself uh, that have inside of it, again, we'll have another structure. So you could, to use it, we have to unnest wider because it's a named list again uh, to see it. But here, what we talking about, we were talking about before, this is an error in uh, unnest wider. It can duplicate name between the affected columns and the original data. This is because this, because, this happened because we have an ID column again, uh, before we do um, the unnesting part in the owner. And the owner itself has an ID column. So the owner have an ID column and we, um, and the data itself, the original data have an ID column. So which, which one uh, it, will, it will get duplicated. And that's why it's, it's, it's coming up with this error. Um, so this name are duplicated, duplicated ID from owner. Now he, provi he provided with a switch suggestion, use the namespace separation that we talked about before uh, to distinguish between using the names. And yeah, here is he provided the underscore, name separation underscore. Let's, let's try this one, see it. So yeah, if we scroll a bit, the owner underscore, you would see underscore everywhere with the, with the owner that uh, like the variables that inside the owner uh, list be now became underscore and the name of the variable, owner underscore the name of the variable. Uh, that's, new, that's how we can dis distinguish between the overcomplicated structure. Um, where is it? ID, owner ID. I think it, yeah. Okay, where is it? Owner underscore ID. Yeah, this one. So that's how we differentiate between the ID because it's having the ID column and the other ID, which is this one. This is how we difference, differentiate. Um, Let's go back now. Let's talk about the relational data. Now we 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 know how to unnest complex structure with use, using unnest longer and unnest wider. Let's move to the the relational data. Nested data is sometimes used to represent uh, data that we spread across multiple data frames. Um, for example, take uh, take got cars. Uh, which contain data about characters. Yeah, characters that appear in the Game of Thrones books. Okay, so it's, a, it's human beings and TV series. Now, like GH Pro, is, it's a list. We start by turning it into a list column. Transferring the list into a list column, it's, it's more just, just putting it in the tip, tipple. That's how he could just convert it. Um, and that's how he, he did here. So the name of the column, JSON again, and uh, got character is a list. Now it's transferred to the list column. We see here, it's a named list now. Um, this one, it will be very useful because they, we, we can differentiate between the list and on, in the name, uh, the unnamed list and named list. But 
yeah, I will, I will search about it uh, after uh, the session. But yeah, so here what he did, again, on the slider because of the name list, converted into t uh, table, a tuple, normal tuple, with the name, gender, culture, born, all of this. Uh, same selecting when you select some some of the, of the columns, it's the same, easier to read, yes. Now, this data set contains also many list columns. So you could see where is list when you use select ID and any anything that provide uh, any column name that, uh, that, is, that is a list, basically. That's how we said here. So the ID itself and anything is a list. Uh, we have we have here uh, aliases, uh, titles, all of them are lists. So, and the same uh, it's, diff it's the same data structure. I think yeah, it's all all of them are characters. But again, I think it's I think of them are all are unnamed lists. Uh, yeah, all of them are unnamed lists because it's different lengths. And yeah, this is where it lists. What is what else he said here? Yeah, now we take the longer uh, the the title. Want this one? More we since it's unnamed list, we want it to uh, to 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 un to extract it or to unlist it. You, we use un unlist uh, longer here, and this is the data itself. So yeah. This is how, and also you have, could do any about in any any type of um, filtering, uh, renaming, any type of analysis in, on this data, data. Now we know how you dig deeper into the tree. You have like suppose you have a tree structure and very deep structure tree tree structure. Now you know how to dig deeper into the, the to 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 reach the data point. That you want in the tree, uh, and you could now do any type of analysis on those data points. But yeah, so deeply nested, we will finish of these case studies with the list columns that very deeply nested, and require repeated rounds of unnest wider and unnest longer uh, to un to unravel. Uh, Gmap cities. So this is yeah, this is another data set provided by recursive um it's uh, uh yeah it's using uh, google g coding api yeah this one is could be useful to, to train on uh, maps uh for example but here when you see it it's a tuple okay so it's a tuple that contain a city and a json now this is not us that we convert it to the JSON, I think it's, uh, it's provided that, that way. But here it's, um, let's see it, let's see it. Let's try to see it. So yeah, it's provided already in this kind of uh, structure. Uh, we have the city as a characters and a JSON, corresponding JSON uh, in, to each city. So, Let's see what he did. Now he, because he want, this is a named one, again, named, but here not named. Um, the name, because this is one, this one is the named one. We want to unlist it, how? By using uh, unlist wider. And here you see the result. Uh, it consists of two columns, the status and the result. Results itself, again, it consists of the list. Yeah, like a list inside a list inside a list. That's how. Um, and the status, a status of the, um, I think the request itself, the API request. Is it okay or not? Okay, I think you have a code, it's 200, I think. Um, so I, you could have a, a code also if, if you dig deeper into the data set, I think. But yeah, let's see what else he did. He, provided here the status. Yeah, he, he he deleted the status and say, because we don't need it since it's all okay. okay. But in a, in a real analysis, this uh, this will be important to know when the status is not okay because you didn't 
you didn't get the request, the, uh, the data from the request, if, you, if it's not okay. Um, so yeah, this is, how, this is what he mentioned here. Now, now result is named list. Again, result here is a named list. We want to unnest it, use unnest wider to the result. And before we use, uh, I want to result also, but this one again, um, we see here that it's, it's uh, like extracted more, extracted address of component formatted address in geometry. And yeah, with geometry here is a named list and yeah. So there's a few different places we could go from here. We might want to undetermine the exact location of, uh, of the match which is stored in the geometry list column. Now we have to uh, unlist geometry itself and a location in the geometry itself. Um, so yeah, it's really very comp like very tree-like structure. If you, if you deal with JSON before, you will know this kind of structure. Um, any API will return JSON, more, most common data types uh, that uh, deal with when you deal with API. Um, so this is how we could unlist it until we have um, or select the data points or the, the column that we need um, in the JSON-like format. Um, yeah, extracting the pound required from more steps. Again, we just, we just search for uh, uh, the formatted um, structure or the data point that you want in your analysis till you have it. And now, and you could do any type of analysis to it. Um, yeah, same, just a type of unnest wider and unnest, uh, a lot of time, multiple times. But yeah. So any, any question until now? No, no, no. Okay, awesome. So once you discover the path component you are interested in, you can extract them directly using another tidr hoist. Provide the, the column, and I think the 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 combined. We want to combine this one into. Um, I think what what is doing? If this case study, yeah. Discover a path to get the component you are interested in. Yeah, this is a latitude and longitude, I think. So northest bounds. Um, can you extract? Let's see what is Hoy's doing. So I didn't catch this one. Let's see what is doing. Okay. So yeah, hoist allow to selectively pull component of a list column into their own top level. So if you provide the data and some columns, uh, this is attributes. Well, let's see an example. See here is a C, it's a tipple, a list, and a list. Okay, hoist, if we provided them with this, with this metadata, what, will it, what it will do? Yeah, it's extract only. Yeah, extract only a specific component. I think we could do this with select. Um, yeah, same. So yeah, this is a uh, hoist. Um, you could dig deeper into hoist and see what it's doing uh, in more details. But finally, we'll talk about JSON. And um, JSON is, yeah. The files we have seen before, they are JSON, right? Um, it's a list. Yeah, it's a list, oh. but it's like JSON. That's why um, it's, a, it's a complex list, list structure, like mm -hmm. tree structure. But um, if it could be converted to JSON easily okay. because it's, it's the same, but in a list. Okay. Uh, so he's trying to teach you how to deal, if you, if you have a, a JSON, for example, how you could do it, uh, your analysis using a, using a JSON. So you basically, I think here we talk more about JSON and how to convert it, I think. Let's, yeah, let's see. I, I, was, I was thinking uh, the examples he, he gave were like JSON, I was thinking. 
Yeah, it's that's not. What I think because because it's less structure. Uh, it's not JSON. JSON is um, is the name of the column that he provided everywhere, but it's not a JSON format. So this is a structure. Oh. Yeah. So it, all, all of them are like like this. It's just a list. Um, and here, JSON is not like it's the name of the column. So it's not um, okay. it's not a JSON format. It's okay. uh, it's the name of the column that contains other lists, which is uh, that we uh, that's what we deal with before uh, but mainly you could do uh, i think we could transform or parse we'll talk about this in json part uh parse json into an r object or a list i think um so let's go into the json part so our case study is the previous section we're sourced from wild called json so the the, um, the main source of it it was json but it's converted i think to use that to list. That's what you think here. Uh, so it's important to understand because while JSON and R data types are pretty similar, there is, isn't perfect one-to-one -one mapping. So it's not like similar in one-to-one -one map, mapping, perfect, not perfect. So it's good to understand a bit about JSON uh, and what's, if things go wrong. Um, so here we, I think he, he discussed JSON data type. JSON is is um, is a acronym for G JavaScript object notation. So if you deal with JavaScript, if you, if you write it write it JavaScript, you will deal with JSON all the time. Um, but yeah, here he said JSON is simple format designed to be easily read and written by machines, not humans. It has six data types, key data types. Four of them are scalars. What is what is this? Uh, NA or null, string, number, and boolean. This is uh is similar to r boolean is similar to r and number is similar to r numbers uh string is similar to r again uh the null is similar to an a in r um but yeah this is the four data types the scalar um and other other data types which is array and object array is an array of like uh, like a list array is a list basically in json and um an object is uh, it's a structure, a construction. Uh, an object is like a name list. Okay, it's a name list. It's written with uh, these curly braces. The name keys in JSON terminology and uh, are strings. So the names itself is a string, have to be a string. The value could be any type. Could be a Boolean, could be a number, could be any type of scalar that we see here. Null, string, number, Boolean, um, or array. Or array. array also is a type. Um, so yeah, now here note that JSON does, doesn't have any native uh, way to, to, to represent dates or date times. So they are often uh, stored as a strength. Uh, the date times in JSON mo most likely will, will, you will store them as a string and you will need to use uh, read our birth date and read our birth date time to turn them into uh, the correct data structure. Similarly, JSON rules for representing floating. Okay, so bars double again, convert uh, to um, to R, so uh, to string of R. Um, but yeah, let's see. So this is the third and final data uh, library that we imported before. Uh, to convert JSON into R, that's what we're talking about. Uh, we want to convert uh, a JSON, like a, a JSON object into an R structure. We recommend the JSON Lite package. Okay, the, uh, uh, we will use only two JSON Lite function, read JSON and bar JSON. In real life, you will use read, just, read JSON to read the JSON file from your desk. Uh, for example, the repulsive package also provides a source for a GS user, which is GitHub user as a JSON file, and you can read it uh, with read JSON. Um, and here is an example, gh, uh, gh user JSON, uh, a pass to a JSON file inside the package itself. So this is the source JSON file. And uh, if you use it here, uh, if you provide a pass, so it just, you provide a pass to the read JSON and it will uh, convert it. Let's see this one in action. 
to, to be more concrete because this is an important one. Um, let's see. I think we will finish soon, so it's. Uh, so, work, yeah. How is. I have to see it. This, let's see it. What do you see about this? What is this? So you see here, yeah, it's an object. Uh, it's our object. And you could see that it have um, column inside the core object itself. And you could reach the column itself with, uh, or that is an attribute with uh, this, um, like this, um, I think uh, this is a dollar sign, I think. Yeah, the dollar sign. Um, it's like an object in, uh, if you know our uh, OB. Uh, I think it's uh, this is this object is this. So yeah, it's a long list. Um, but let's see what he told here. Uh, check it's the same as the data we are using previously, identical. See if if the GH user is the same as this G, uh, GH user two. The data with that we were using before. Let's see it. Let's see. So let's see this one first. Yeah, this one is what we were using. What we were using is identical. Yes, it's identical. So it's the same. Yes, it's the same. Um, so this is how you convert the JSON file into the an R object, and you could use uh, the R object now uh, doing any type of um, analysis that we did, did before. But let's see if you, if you talk about the list itself, because it's, it's we not converted into list. In this book, we'll also use parse JSON um, since it takes a string containing a JSON, which make it good for generating simple example. To get started here are three simple JSON data set, starting with this, with a number, then putting a few numbers. Okay. So it's converting any structure, I think, um, a JSON. Yeah, it's converting a JSON into a, a list. This is a parse JSON that we talked about. I think this one is the one that you could take the object itself and turn it into um, a, J, uh, a list. And since you have a list, you could use this um, honest, wider, honest, longer, like we did before. Um, also, JSON Lite has another uh, important function called from JSON. We don't use it here because it's perform automatic simplification. Uh, this often works well, particularly simple cases, but we think you are better off doing the rectangular yourself. So yeah, it's, it, I say, they say that this one doing the all the work for you um but but you again because it's simplifying a lot of stuff you will not know how uh, the structure goes uh, yourself and this this com complicate your analysis more because you don't see uh, there is no transparency on how to see the the variables or the data um yeah starting the rectangular process here is a uh a simple example, you see, parse JSON, take a JSON file and then parse it to uh, parse it to use parse JSON to convert it to into the list. Now it's the list. Use the honest wider and honest longer. Uh, if it's a named list, honest wider. If an uh, if an uh, if it's unnamed list, use honest uh, longer. Yeah, and that's it. I think this this is it. Uh, any other question before we wrap um, it up? You finish on top of the hour <laughs> just one minute yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this I, I think this is interesting because like uh, I literally been using uh, finding it difficult to work with you know um, leaves and whatsoever and uh, yeah thank you for uh, working through this one awesome glad that I uh, I'd be able to to explain this uh, and it's very interesting because you most of the 
if you if you deal with any type of APIs, you will you will deal with JSON. So you have to uh, at certain yeah. time to deal with this kind of structure. Exactly. So it's very useful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, yeah. Thank no, thanks. Thanks. It it was uh, really clear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank awesome. you very much. Okay. Ciao. Bye bye. Okay. So, yeah, so, so I, I, yeah. next week I should look at uh, like web scraping. Yeah. I think oh, yes. structure is web scraping, yes. Yeah, so I, I should be, Yeah, I think we could type stop because I think we're almost done. Yeah. Yeah, so 